happiest location on Earth, Disney World, is where I work. I generally won't discuss anything about my job here because there are strict guidelines on what can and cannot be posted online by staff members. But without a certain context, I don't think I could give you this narrative. In fact, it looks like I may have to bid this job farewell as well. I can't fathom coming in to work here any longer. It's me again, Whisper. I've worked for the corporation for 23 years. I spent my first 20 years of employment at an amusement park, capturing small-time criminals and maintaining law and order to make sure that everyone had a good time. There will be the occasional dispute, but nothing out of control. It eventually got to be too much for me to work outside in the heat and to spend all day strolling through the park. I thus waited for a request to be moved to an indoor workspace. I was sent to one of the company's resorts. Although the workspace and comfort level have significantly improved compared to the previous location, the clientele appears to be more diversified and demanding. Households make up the majority. I think a lot of folks are under pressure because these holidays are so pricey. I've heard a lot of the folks in adjacent rooms arguing and swearing. Usually, I'll come and put an end to it by telling them to sleep or having each of them focus on something until their fury subsides. They function well in the majority of situations, but this particular tale is unique. Telling it while I can is imperative. The tale goes that a few days prior, a room that was meant to be returned that day was entered by the cleaning crew. The previous visitor must usually go by 11 a.m in order for the staff to tidy things and get ready to greet the following one at 3 p.m. However, the staff members saw that every item owned by the travelers who had reserved the room remained in place. She started cleaning other flats right away and left a note as a reminder. However, when they returned to check after the next two days, every piece of furniture was still there. When I was called in to check that room, I saw that it was stocked with everything a family would need for a vacation. Suitcases, clothing, food, and a few toys. The passengers in the room verified the facts with the management. There are two kids, a mother, and a father in the household. When I tried to contact the number they gave me, the call went straight to voicemail. I summoned in the cleaning team to come to work and relocate all of this family's possessions someplace else until someone could be reached there because it appeared that this matter would not be resolved fast. I started looking into this missing family situation more thoroughly. Before the staff discovered their possessions in the room, they had been here for five days. I was able to locate this family's automobile in the parking lot and discovered that they had paid their charge. It would only take me a short stroll to locate their vehicle. That rules out the possibility that they were involved in a car accident or that they made the decision to leave their possessions behind. I then noticed that they purchased a supper package. Upon prepaying for their meals, Patrons will be given specific tickets that may be redeemed for food. Three tickets were utilized by this family. The last ticket was used two days after the check-in. They appeared to have come late on the first day of check-in and chose to remain in their hotel. They used two tickets to the FCOT theme park the following day, and they used a further ticket to the Magic Kingdom for their Disney breakfast. Passengers will wear something called a magic ring, which serves as a key to their accommodation, their entry pass, their consumption card, their payment card, and many
many other purposes. After some time, I managed to deduce their itinerary of travel on their day out. They enjoyed breakfast at a park restaurant in the Magic Kingdom, played a few games, then rode It's a Small World for their final ride, which was at around 11 o'clock. I was unable to locate anything further after that. The 10 minute long It's a Small World water train travels through vibrant fantasy scenarios that depict dozens of different countries while traversing all seven continents. In this circumstance, I had to ask for assistance from someone else. I made contact with a former Magic Kingdom co-worker and requested access to surveillance footage taken at the same moment the family boarded the train. My friend seemed really upset and bewildered when I got there to meet him. He presented his findings to me. Typically, security cameras are located directly at the landing of every roller coaster. The tape recording from when the train finished and every passenger got off did not include them. But I did see them again when they scanned their magic rings to enter and board the roller coaster. Immediately, the worst case possibilities come to mind. Three of the youngsters stepped off the train in the middle of the journey to aid the other child who had fallen from his seat. They had all suffered injuries, lost their lives, or became stuck in the mechanical field. Thus, in the midst of the day, we halted the roller coaster straight away, shut off all of the loud music, and turned on all of the lights. I had to seek more aid after my friend, and I had looked around the tracks three times. After over 10 individuals had joined the hunt, we had shown up empty-handed, save for three cell phones and a cap. I'm not sure what occurred anymore, honestly. I kept looking into this family's strange absence throughout the course of the following several days, but I wasn't sure who to tell what I was going to discover next. I phoned the police and thought they would show up, but it seems that the company I worked for had a ring to hide incidences such as this. If I assisted in their hiding too, I concluded that I could not continue to live this way. After doing more research into their whereabouts and activities since coming, I found out today that they had bought a souvenir package with pictures shot at the park. Park and several cameras are installed on the roller coasters to capture special moments. As soon as they are shot, all images are freely accessible and promptly posted to the customer's Disney account for storage. Every time a new photo is taken, the system will be notified and the magic ring will save each person's location. Thus, the family's absence is much more mysterious. I swear there were 732 photographs in the photo album when I got into their Disney account. The first 30 or so pictures are typical. They were taken inside castles, at roller coasters, and at the entrance to the amusement park. The It's a Small World location is where the remaining pictures were shot. There will only be one picture taken of this roller coaster every ride. This family has, if I understand correctly, traveled the train almost 700 times. The first picture shows everyone in a joyful and regular state. There weren't any empty seats on the busy day's train, which was full with people. However, they became odd after the 50th picture. This modest family of four was the only ones aboard the abandoned train, and they appeared to be very disoriented. I could barely make out the woman and her two kids at about shot 450. Upon closer inspection, I noticed that the father was hunched down on the chair next to him, his head missing. 
there was another body on the chair at around snapshot, 675, leaving just the mother and kid. That woman and her child stayed perfectly still. They may still be alive, but I believe they have some kind of brain damage. With pallid expressions, they both turned to gaze forward. The models in a few of the pictures moved, I promise you. It was evident to me that they were not at the same location. Another picture shows a model climbing aboard the train beside the other families. I'm worried that if I keep watching, I won't be able to handle it and will throw up at lunch. Since my last check, the size of the photo file had grown somewhat. Therefore, I switched off that album. Hey dude, stop telling me that there are still pictures added. I noticed that the local cops had shown up as I turned to face the surveillance camera. From from point on, they will control everything. I wish I had known what was going on, but I also wish I had stayed out of this. I don't believe I have any additional information on this story to update. I thought I would quit my work and never come back here after speaking with the cops. In order to cover up Disney's misdeeds regarding the full disappearance of a family, I merely want to bring this tale in front of as many people as possible. They never vanished. As the main character mentioned, no additional updates have been released since this article, so I know where they are stuck. Some folks who have also reported experiencing unusual events at Disney World are quoted below. Regarding this subject, I have a lot of skepticism. However, I have also witnessed several unusual occurrences here. In 2012, I was an employee of Disney World and I made the decision to utilize my employee ID card for one more free ride before moving on to a new career. After riding every other roller coaster in the park, I wanted to conclude my experience on the It's a Small World coaster before I left this area for the last time as an employee. Up to the very end of the journey in the European zone, everything continued to go smoothly. A doll of a cute young Swiss girl caught my eye. She was positioned rather near the train. Despite having everything in my hands and having walked past this location hundreds of times, I have never seen this puppet, but it doesn't concern me. Since I'm not in a very high position, I won't be the first to know if the puppets here alter. Then, to be honest, I saw her four more times. It's only one girl, unlike the other characters. She doesn't sing or dance. She was just plainly visible, even though she was hidden in the rear. It's one of those things that, if you listen closely, you simply have to believe. It was already late at night, yet even though I witnessed it with my own eyes, I was certain of what had occurred at that moment. Since my companion was in the executive compartment, I was the only passenger on the train, and I was somewhat afraid. I tried everything to divert my attention and comfort myself, and eventually my journey came to an end. It is something I will always remember. That puppet was standing there, clutching the goodbye sign's base when I spotted it. All I could think rationally was that this was all just a game. Finding out that, for whatever reason, my insane buddy had planned everything. Even though he had sworn on his life that he wasn't the one doing it and couldn't do it, even if he wanted to, this set of puppets does not have a duplicate. If one breaks, they'll have to order a new one or fix it after the park shuts. The Swiss female puppet was retired a long time ago since she would never dance or sing like the other puppets, no matter what they did. The last time I rode It's a Small World was in 1990. I'm never getting back on that train. 
I will never, ever get on that train, not even if I take my kids to Disney in the future. I'm not the only one who still gets nightmares from what I witnessed in there sometimes. It was the end of the school year, and when I went there with my class, it was already dark. After roughly two rounds of the other games, someone in my class pleaded with us to go complete. It's a small world, so we gave in. That would also be the final game we played that day, because it was getting near to closing time. I figured maybe we would be the only ones playing, or at most, there would be a small group of us. There are six members of our group. I shall always remember this until the day I pass away. We had already reached halfway at that point. I can't recall what was going on around me or whatever continent I was traveling through. I was so terrified that I was unable to focus on anything. In order to get me to turn to face her, my friend firmly grabbed my hand. Her mouth was hanging open as she sobbed, unable to find the right words to speak. Continue pointing down to the water below instead. I was scared of her, only by the way she was acting and by her face expression. Although I truly didn't want to look down, I was also curious as to what had so terrified my companion. I bent down to look at the side of the ship, only inches from the wall, and did my best to bring my eyes down to the water's surface. Below the surface, I could see well and there were innumerable heads and sharks. His face was fixed in terror and agony. There were no cries as everyone opened their lips to shout. I screamed till I scared the living daylights out of everyone. They turned to me and began to reach out to pat me, but I kept saying, Uncle, they're under us. They're in the water in large numbers. They're stranded in the ocean. Naturally, Everyone went out to peer beneath the surface right away, but all they saw was murky water with lines at the bottom. My companion and I were still in disbelief at what we saw. We sprang out as soon as the pipe stopped. An employee from the control room hurried over to inquire about the situation. With tears in our eyes, the two of us attempted to describe what we had witnessed. The employee's face became pale the moment we brought up the faces in the water. It was all in her response to us. In an attempt to swiftly cool down, she declared that everything had been an error. We all know it's not true. So, oh well, tell us it's just a mirror of the dolls. We would wait for the others at the park's gate, which our friend assisted us with. We declined their request to convey the tale in exchange for a fee of members. We both departed and stopped talking about it since we knew that no one would find this narrative credible. The buddy sitting next to me at the time never went back to Disney. She lived with me. I most likely won't return there. We made several attempts to explain it, but we were unable to reach a consensus. What was keeping all those unfortunate people locked in that position was all I could think about. From where do they originate? In what should have been the happiest spot on earth, they were screaming in terror. So why were they imprisoned there? 